the Steadicam Steadymate and the Cinemode Ready Rig side by side. Let's check them out. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. I wanted to touch on today the results of a review I did of the Steadymate. Uh, the Steadicam Steadymate that I did uh, about a year or so ago. At that time, I did do a review of the Steadymate. You can check it out here if you're interested in my thoughts of the Steadymate. And, uh, and one note, this was the Steadymate for the two-handed gimbals. This is not the Steadymate S for the one-handed gimbals like the Ronin S, uh, which is actually something I'm actually really interested in getting my hands on a Steadymate uh, S just to see how that looks like in the future. But this is purely a comparison for the double-handed gimbals. Gimbals are wonderful at smoothing out motion, but what they don't do is they don't take out that fourth axis up and down motion, which means when you're walking, you can see that. And, and sometimes you can mask that better in how you shoot. Sometimes it's very, very prevalent. But as a shooter, just personally, uh, the fourth axis is just one of those things that's just sort of driven me up the wall the last couple of years. And I've been trying to find a way to minimize or eliminate that if I can. I did have a commercial come up where I had the budget that I could get the Steadymate from Steadicam. And it's supposed, it's advertised to get rid of that fourth axis. So I went ahead and got it and took it out. And, you know, I'm going to show you the results here. I have one rule, guys, one rule whenever I do comparisons, especially for stabilization thing. And that is no slow-mo. Okay? <laughs> it drives me crazy when you see, uh, stabilizations test on the internet where people are shooting at these super slow motion. I mean, handheld footage looks pretty smooth at slow motion. So all of this stuff that you're going to see, I did do at 24 frames a second. I am going to go there and put a descriptor of, how, of my settings in there for you to look at. But let's go in side by side, take a look at the footage right now. Okay, so let's take a look here at these two shots side by side. I have starting off with the Steadicam Steadymate a shot pull back and as you can see once I get going it's fairly smooth it's the beginning that's a little rough now when I go to the ready rig um, there is a little more bounce in the ready rig uh, but once I get back in my backward move it, it smooths out pretty well too so if you look at them now if I put them side by side you can see just the comparison between the actual shots the Steadicam is smoother, but is it a thousand dollars smoother? You know, that's the question. So we'll look at another example here. You know, I think I think this is a good one. I was going uh, fast with a slight turn. You can see the Steadymate is smooth. I mean, it is nice, especially when I come into this little curve. And uh, the Ready Rig, there's more bounce in it. Uh, I was just going a little faster here. Uh, wasn't quite watching my walk quite as well. So you, especially when you come to that turn, you see that little bit of a fourth axis bounce there. And when you see them side by side, you do see that steady mate is smoother. But for a shot, a commercial shot like this, uh, you know, I just don't know once again if it's that much smoother. Is it really worth it getting it in there? So here's another sample that I did. I'm just going to put this side by side here so you can look at it. Um, and this really is going to show you these two systems side by side uh, on rough terrain, going upstairs, uh, going in circular arc motions, just so you can really see them side by side. So, you know, as you watch this, I think the, the first thing that you do see is the Steadymate is smoother than the Ready Rig. Um, you know, that's there's you get you have a little bit of that bounce uh, coming from the ready rig. The, the question that comes down for me, though, is looking between the two systems. I still feel that everything I see in the ready rig, I could add some warp stabilizer or go in mocha and get that thing just about the same as a steady mate. Um, here's going the stairs. Now, if you look, this is an important test right here coming down the stairs. You know, both of them handle the stairs pretty well, you know. Um, and you do get a little bit of that pop there 
in the steady mate I'm still getting a, a if you look here in the steady mate I'm still getting a bit of that fourth axis uh, that goes there and um, you know the question really comes down to from a practicality standpoint the ready rig is just so much more practical to use and function with uh, than the steady cam that you have to ask yourself which one of these makes the most sense for you especially seeing the ready rig is so much cheaper uh, than the Steadicam steady mate. Now this is kind of a tough one. You'll see me here. I'm going to spin around this bush. Very, very uneven ground. Uh, very, very hard to get a foothold here. So if you look at the playground equipment, you can kind of see. And look, the ready rig's holding up great. Really is. Um, there's a little bit of a bounce there. Kind of organic a little organic bounce but the ready rig does make that bounce a little more organic so it's a little less obnoxious um, the steady cam does hold up but it really comes down to is that a thousand dollars worth of difference okay so there you go side by side shots of the ready rig versus the steady cam steady made s and i'll let you make your own verdicts on that um you know i, I don't think there's any Doubt you can see the steady mate is a smoother system. I mean, I think it definitely chills out that fourth axis uh, enough. The thing that I was a little disappointed in, honestly, is it just didn't do it as much as I was expecting. Uh, I really found that the ready rig versus the steady mate were, uh, while the steady mate was smoother, it wasn't a thousand dollars smoother. And I keep coming back to that because. For $1,000, I mean, you can buy Mocha for After Effects for 500 bucks and stabilize and get almost identical footage, and you'll still have an additional $500 if you get a ready rig Mocha, and you'll be able to have uh, another piece of gear for 500 bucks. I think it really comes down to you. So for me, the final verdict as I look at it is, is it worth it? Is the Steadicam SteadyMate worth it? And I, I think it really depends. It really depends. Um, a couple things that I find the ready rig more practical is this. One, it's cheaper. I feel like I can do a whole lot of stuff with that $1,000. Uh, the setup is infinitely easier. It's, you can literally use a ready rig by yourself and go out and shoot. You don't feel you can do that with a steady mate. Um, the faster setup time on a set, uh, you can just put the two together uh, much, much quicker for the ready rig. Uh, safety, I always feel like I'm a little more control with that ready rig whereas that steady cam arm at least when i was using it uh it did bump into things now that could just be because i'm an inexperienced operator with a steady cam arm i test that but if you're just running out of the gate getting this as a rental that is something to consider uh the ready rig is so much more comfortable for smaller body types than the steady made was at least for me and then um and then really, I think it all comes down to results. You know, I felt like I can get almost identical results between the two systems. And so to invest in a whole other system, that, that much money uh, for such minimal results, for me, wasn't worth it. Now, that being said, if I have a budget, and if you're an indie filmmaker, this is something for you to consider. If you have a budget to get either or just to rent, right? I would still, can, I still thought the SteadyMate S or the SteadyMate was a good product. I mean, it's Steadicam, it's Tiffin. Tiffin's a fantastic company. I would consider renting it if I had the budget uh, to get a very specific type of shot and I just wanted that super complete, beautiful control. I was handing the footage off, I couldn't control it later and do it. Uh, if I have to own one and buy one, I would probably consider getting the Ready Rig just because the Ready Rig I think is more versatile and practical because you can use it, it's more comfortable, you can shoot with it longer and, and do a lot of rigs. And a lot of times people aren't so uh, extreme about eliminating the fourth axis. So if you just want a practical shooting rig that you can go and shoot, especially if you're shooting on like the Ronin 2, which is a much heavier rig, uh, stuff like that, then the ready rig is, is practical. But if you have a crew, if you have time and you have a budget, then I do think the steady mate uh, could work for you too. It just really depends upon what you're looking for. Anyway, guys, I hope that was useful. Go out there, have fun shooting, and I'll talk to you soon.